Tonight on The Big Idea, we're on the roadmap to the American dream, and you're barreling down a highway to millions. Notorious nightclubs. Ian Schrager, the man who started the legendary Studio 54, comes back from rock bottom with a groundbreaking idea. Because if I like it, then I'm, I'm assuming there's going to be other people out there that will also like it. And turning mistakes into millions. A wild ride from mobsters, drug runners, and karate masters takes one man from the brink of destruction to millions. I started to realize what I was doing to myself and to my family. Are you ready for the big box? Their stories, your roadmap, the American dream, tonight on The Big Idea. Welcome to The Big Idea, your daily roadmap to the American dream. I'm Donnie Deutsch, and we're starting out on the roadmap tonight at a low point. Okay, what's the worst moment of your life? Your rock bottom, whatever your answer, and however bad things got for you, I'm going to show you tonight. You've always got a multi-million dollar comeback right at your fingertips. And my first guest came back from one of the most infamous scandals of the 70s and a trip hey, to prison. Any message to anybody out there who may not be feeling good about themselves right now to get them going? Uh, just don't be afraid to give something a shot and give it all you have. Uh, I mean, not to me, and be relentless about it. Ian Schrager, man. Great to Thank see you. Thank you, Donnie. Ian Schrager, CEO of Ian Schrager Company. Guy, to come back is on top again in a big way. We're back on the roadmap in two minutes. You're going to see that you can come back from anything and make millions. Next, the karate teacher who grew up in a wise guy family becomes a drug dealer with a black belt. I was making about 15, 20,000 a week, cash in your pocket. So, what's he doing now to make millions? The answer will amaze you. Welcome back to The Big Idea on the Roadmap to the American Dream. Okay, if you ever made a terrible mistake, something that at the time looked like it could totally screw up your life, well, right now, I want to challenge you to see mistakes in a whole new light. Own them and turn them into something positive. And my next guest found a way not only to come back from addiction, but make millions. Turning mistakes into millions. John Giordano. He grew up in a tough Bronx neighborhood, surrounded by crime. And as a young man, he moved to Miami. Giordano got into drugs and got in deep. After he went into rehab, Giordano got a revelation. He opened G&G Holistic Center, a treatment facility that's been featured on A&E's hit show, Intervention. John Giordano, founder of G&G Holistic Center and author of Proven Holistic Treatment for Addiction. Welcome to Big Idea, man. Thank you. Well, you are one of the poster boys for what this show is all about, a guy who, you know, came back from adversity with a capital A and have turned that into a multi-million dollar business. Let's start with your story. This kid growing up in the South Bronx. Tell me what life was like with a dad dealing heroin. They were great parents and things like that, but it was kind of wild. I remember when I was a kid, I remember sitting on the, we used to take me to the Italian American club. I was sitting on this guy's lap. He had a holster with his pistol and girls running around and I wanted to play with his gun and my father got real angry with him. I mean, these are the things I remember growing up. Yeah. Did you, did you know that was, obviously that's, you didn't know anything different. Was that, do you think it was wrong? Did you have a sense of right or wrong or that's just what it was? Right or wrong, it's yeah. how I was living. Yeah. That's what was my, my view of the world. You found your way into a gang. I uh, got into gangs. I was in a black gang. I had to fight a couple of guys. I got in that one. Then I didn't feel right in a black gang, so I went into a... But you were in a black gang. Yeah, in a black gang. All white black. guy in a black gang. White guy in a black gang. So now you're a kid. Your father's doing time for dealing heroin. You grew up in the South Bronx. You know, mobbed up family. You're in gangs yourself. Tell me how you found your way to a karate studio. <laughs> it's kind of a funny story. It goes like this. We were driving by, a friend and I, we looked upstairs, we seen this karate school. We wanted to go up there and beat the heck out of the instructor. We wanted to see how tough he was. <laughs> okay, so I mean, it's how crazy yeah. we were at the time. So we went up there and it was late and we decided to leave. We went back the next day and I decided to go and take karate classes just to see what it was like. So anyway, the teacher was a short little round guy and you know, and round face and I says, what is this, a joke? You know, he was teaching us how to block a punch at the time. So he asked me for volunteers. So I raised my sure, hand right away. Yes, and right. as he's talking, I go to sneak punch him in the head. All of a sudden, I don't know what happened. I wind up on the floor, have a foot in my face, and his round face smiling at me, you know, and I says, oh, my God, what happened? I fell in love with karate. 
and I've been in the karate for 45 years. There was years. a greater force. <laughs> there was a greater power out there because you were always about power and being stronger and, whoa, right. something different. It's something different. It was so wild I couldn't believe it. How did it change your life? It changed my life. It gave me something to focus on. It gave me something that was worthwhile to be proud of. It taught me discipline. It taught me how to function at a different level. And it got me away from the gangs, and it got me away from home, actually, too, because I was always in the karate school. Yeah. And that brought you a whole level of success with karate studios, but it also brought you to what would seem to be your downfall. Well, what happened was, is, you know, here I am, a national karate champion, and doing all these wonderful things and everything like that. And then I started, my students used to come to class high sometimes, and I used to torture them, literally torture them in class. And I said to them, I said, why don't you come to my class stoned? Are you out of your mind? So they said, well, you should try it someday. So I said, okay. One day I did. And from that day on, I started to use drugs. What kind of drugs? Well, first I started with LSD. Then I started with pot. Then I went from pot to pills. Then I went from pills to cocaine. And I really started getting really bad. Yeah. And uh, then I started doing collection work for the smugglers. And I was selling cocaine. And I was making tremendous, I mean, it was almost like comical, the kind of money we were making at the time. What kind of money were you making? I was making about 15, 20,000 a week, cash in your pocket. How long ago was this? This was about in the 70s, 70s. 70s. So you were making a million dollars clear a year oh, yeah, easy. in the 70s. So that's the equivalent of you were making 10 million cash a year. Yeah, it was cash. wild. Or even more. I mean, it became, and how old money you? became ridiculous. Yeah, how old were you? I was about 33. 33. You're making the equivalent of 10 million bucks a year cash. You're doing this whole drug thing. And what happens? My family did an intervention on me. Which was wild. Your family being who? My, my mother, my wife at the time, uh, my brother, my partner. I was in, I had some businesses that looked, so this way it looked good, I had businesses. And they all did an intervention on me. And my, my wife said, I'm going to leave you and you're never going to see the kids. And my mother said, I'm never going to talk to you again. And my mother wasn't like that. For her to say that, to get the courage to say that, I knew I was in trouble. So I says, okay, I'll go to treatment. So I had some coke in my sock. I went into the bathroom, got high, went upstairs to treatment, and I used to terrorize the therapist. I told him, if you keep bothering me, I'm gonna have my black belts when you go to your car downstairs and give you a couple of reminders not to do that anymore. That's how crazy I was. I didn't realize the drugs made me really more nuts than I already was. Something happened in treatment. You can call it a spiritual awakening. In two weeks in treatment, I started to change. I started to wake up. I started to listen. People can hear, that's biological. I was listening to what they were saying. And when I was listening, I started to realize what I was doing to myself and to my family and to everybody else around me. See, I led a double life with karate. It was very interesting. I got the Martin Luther King Award, the helping the, the black community. I got all the homeless award. I did all the, and then I was selling drugs, drugs and, and getting people, high yeah. with it. I mean, you yeah. know, it was like nuts. Crazy. So on the one yeah. hand, you had this business, this seemed to be thriving business, this karate business, karate champ, and you're dealing drugs, a uh, million dollars, your cash. I never got arrested, never got anything. So tell me about this business you built. Well, we, um, it started off really funny. Uh, you got 300 bucks in the bank. Nothing right. now. You come out of this treatment center. You built a business now. It's eventually 12 million a year, 76 employees, but you got 300 bucks. What'd you do? Well, we had $300 with this, this little treatment center, which was I was just doing private, private practice. And what happened was, let me digress a little bit, because what actually happened was I came out of treatment. I was in a hotel room. My wife wound up leaving me anyway, crying with my children saying, Daddy, what are you doing here? And I was making $250 a week because my friend who owned the hotel gave me a job. And I did that, and then actually I raised a lot of money and I opened up a big hospital program, but I got with the wrong partners. It wasn't any good. And, but I meanwhile, I went to school, I got my diplomas, I did everything I had to go, and as the years went by, I learned this business from top to bottom. That's one thing my dad taught me, learn everything about a business so this way nobody can hold you hostage. And that's what I did. And then I was just making a salary. And I went to, I, I gave up with all that stuff. And I says, I'm gonna open up my own place, but I don't wanna borrow any money from anybody. I don't want to be in control of my business. I wanna, and I'm gonna do it the hard way. So I got $300, I rented a little 700 square foot place, and people started to come, and they started to come, and they started to love. We were helping a lot of people. We, it was me and another person. You know, we were helping a, a lot of people. 
And as time went by, it was wild. Then all of a sudden, okay, it started to build even further and further. And I had a doctor from the University of Miami, a Dr. Deborah Mash, who was doing this Ibogaine, which was another breakthrough therapy. And she went to being with us. And she started giving me her clients, and that got bigger and bigger. Then I got a partner, and then I got two partners. And that's when it went over the top. We had my partner, Jerry Goldfarb, and his son. They made it explode. We went from three employees to 75 employees, but we still keep the quality, and we're accessible to our clients, even though we own the treatment center. So here's a man who basically was a junkie, was dealing drugs, down and out, in a hotel room, 300 bucks in your pocket, now thriving business, helping tons of people, 75 employees, 12 million a year. That's what it's all about, man. Thanks, guy. Good stuff. I got to read something you wrote to me. You gave me your book, Proven Holistic Treatment for Addiction, uh, by John Giordano, and you wrote in here, says, Tadani, I watch your show and believe that you inspire people to break through their limiting belief systems and obtain what seems to be the unattainable. May God continue to bless you and all you do. Thank you. That's a great compliment, and you are doing it, man. Good Thank stuff. You, what Greg. a great story. Business is vision. Recognizing opportunity and having the guts to do what you love. In tonight's moment of clarity, John Giordano has a life-changing revelation. Something happened in treatment. We could call it a spiritual awakening. In two weeks in treatment, I started to change. I started to wake up. I started to listen. People can hear. That's biological. I was listening to what they were saying. And when I was listening, I started to realize what I was doing to myself and to my family and to everybody else around me. See, I led a double life with karate. It was very interesting. I got the Martin Luther King Award, the helping the, the black community. I got all the homeless award. I did all the, and then I was selling drugs, drugs and, and getting thing, high. Yeah. Whatever. I mean, you yeah. know, it was like nuts. I would like to thank DirecTV for sponsoring this week's Moment of Clarity. Great roadmap tonight. You know, two shining examples, Ian Schrager, John Giordano. One guy in prison, literally in a cage. Another guy down and out, a junkie in a treatment center. Neither guy has a penny. Both guys build empires. Both guys happy. I don't care. You're never too down. You're never too out. There's always a chance for a comeback. As a matter of fact, that's sometimes the best time because you have complete clarity. So if it's not going great for you now, man, pick it up. Go for it. It's always ahead.